So within the last few lessons, we've looked at how to actually make a connection to our database system in the PHP code. We've also taken a look at how to create a database as well as creating a table. And so now what we'll do on this lesson is focus in on how to insert data into that table that we have created that's in our database. Before I do that, I've noticed a typo. I spelled attendance wrong in my previous lesson, so I'm going to go ahead and make that change here. And whenever you're working with PHP My Admin, it's actually pretty easy to make changes. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit change for that field name and type in attendance. There we go. Go ahead and hit save. And now the name of that field has been changed. So we're going to go ahead now and work with our code. And we're going to make the connection. So I'm going to maximize my page here that I'm working with. And let's go ahead and copy all the code that I had from the previous lesson. I'm going to go ahead and use all of that, or actually I will reuse most of that. Create a new page. I'll paste that in there. I'm going to go ahead and save it now as uh, something different to work with. And I'm going to call it insert form.php. And I'll go ahead and hit save. And so just by the name of the page, you can see that we're probably going to be creating a form, and that's what I will be using to input my data through, or use that as a tool to send my data to the actual database, so that the user has some kind of interaction here to insert whatever data they want. And so what I'll do is, I can't put the form within the PHP delimiters, so I'm going to go ahead and put it between the body and the opening PHP delimiter, and then we're going to go ahead and create our form. Forms are pretty easy. Uh, we type in a form tag. We've got the two different attributes that we need. We need the action, which is going to be the page that will handle it, and that's going to be the page that I'm working on right now. So I'm just going to type in insert form.php, and then I also need the method of how I want to send the data, and that's going to be post. All right, and then what I'll do is space down a few and put in the closing form tag. And let's go ahead and create our form. I'm going to need three text boxes to insert the data to because I have the three fields that I want to insert data into. I've got the topic, the name, and the attendance. So I'll go ahead and create those first. I'll put the label there and then create the text box here. Input the type is going to equal text and the name is going to equal, uh, we'll do topic. and we'll, I'll do it all lowercase to make it easy to work with. I'll throw in a break tag at the end of that. So I've got topic in there. Now we're going to go ahead and do one for name. I'll throw in the label here, name. And then we'll throw in the text box next. Input type equals text. Name is going to equal, we'll just use name for this particular one. And then I'll end that and throw in a break tag. And then we're going to also work with the attendance. So I'll type in a label for attendance. And let's go ahead and create our last text box that we need. Input, the type is going to equal text. And the name is going to equal, we'll just put attendance. All right, and we'll put a break tag at the very end. Okay, so I've got the three text boxes now created that are going to be able to be used by the user to input data into my database. I also will need the submit button. So that's the last thing that I'm going to need here. And I'll just do an input. Type is going to equal submit, and then we also need the name, and the name is going to equal submit as well for my code. All right, so I've got the form completed. So now what we'll need to do is we're going to modify it here in our PHP code. So I'll just space it down a little bit to give it a little bit of space. Now in the PHP delimiter, in the previous lessons, we took a look at the isSet function and how we can actually determine whether or not the submit button has been pressed. So we do not want our code to run unless the submit button has been pressed. So I'm going to have to go ahead and type in here the if, and then we're going to need to do within the if condition the is set function. So is set, I'll put in the two parentheses for is set, and then what we're going to test for is that global array for the post. And so I'm going to go ahead and put a dollar sign, underscore post, and I need the two square brackets and the single quotes within the square brackets and I'm going to need to, to check for the submit and so make sure again if you have the lowercase here for, for the name of submit that when you're checking for it that you're using the lowercase here for the submit so I've got that it's going to now check to see if the submit button has been pressed or is set I'll go ahead and have an opening curly brace 
and now all of my PHP code up to this point is going to be is going to run only if the submit button has been pressed. So I've opened it up here for the if condition, and I'm going to close it after the ending of the closing my database connection right here. So right before the end of the delimiter, I'll go ahead and throw in closing curly brace. So now I've got my code to run only when the submit button has been pressed. I do want my connection still. I want to, I need to make the connection. I'm going to also make sure that I have to select the database I want to work with. So I've got the connection, the database that I want to work with with the connection. Now what I'll need to do is I'm going to go ahead and change the SQL statement that I'm working with to instead of being a create table, what I want to work with is an inserting values into a table. So I just want to use the SQL variable that I created because we're running it right here in the query and I'm going to go ahead in the double quotes type in my SQL statement here. So the statement is going to just end up being something like insert and then we're going to do into and now the name of the table that I want to work with. So this table that I wanted to work with from the previous, le le previous lesson was lectures and then after that what I'm going to go ahead and do is type in two parentheses and opening and closing parentheses and what we can do on the parentheses is we can set the columns or the fields that we want to work with in my table and I can pick whatever order that I want of those three. I'm going to leave them in the order that I've got up on the top there, topic, name, and attendance. But if I wanted to have them reordered, I could definitely do that. And it just makes it a little bit easier to work with if you um, don't know the order of your field names to type them in here like this and then you can go ahead and set them. So for instance, let's see, topic is the first one. So I'll put in there as topic, then attendance, and then the last one is going to be, let's see, not, not attendance, topic, name, and then attendance. So those are the three field names that are in my database table itself. And I have them all, I have the first letter uppercase. In fact, I could actually have them all lowercase because it's not case sensitive here in this particular section. It will be case sensitive in the next section where we actually enter in the values for these. So I'm going to go ahead and do values now. And then in the parentheses after values are going to be the same, it's going to be the same lineup that we have here. So the first value that I put in here is going to be for topic, then the next value is going to be for name, and then the third value is going to be for attendance. So what I'm wanting to do is wanting to take the post information that we had sent from our form and I want to pass it to my table. So what I need to do is very similar to what I have here on the is set. I'm going to take from the post array, I want to take the topic, name, and attendance element of that. So here's what we'll do. For the first one, I'll start off with just two single quotes. And then we're going to go ahead in between the single quotes, I'm going to put the dollar sign, underscore, post, and then the square brackets. And within the square brackets, we're going to go ahead and do our first text box's name which is going to be topic and this is all lowercase because the text box's name that I had set up here is all lowercase so it has to be the same case as what it is in the text box itself that you created so that's the first one what I'll do is copy the from opening our single quote to single quote I'm going to copy that because I want to reuse that code so now that I put at the end of this we'll put a comma I'm going to go ahead and paste it put a comma and then paste it again so that I've got three of them here and I'm just going to change the names from topic on this one to name and then attendance on this one here. So these three values that I'm entering all are going to be coming from the topic, name, and attendance text box that we had and they're going to be inserted into the topic field, name field, and attendance field of the lectures table that's part of the snippets database which is made with the connection of right here the local host with my username and my password so there's a lot of different things that we have here but all together they'll work to be able to input the data into my table and so here's where the actual statement happens where we actually insert this information we tell it to run a query with SQL as my variable now this is the statement that we're entering into it and this statement happens to be this whole line of code that we had set up and then this is the connection we're going to use to connect to it. So we'll need all of this information that we have here. I'm going to go ahead and save the page now 
and I'll go ahead minimize this restore it back to where it was let's go ahead and go to our page I'm gonna hit back here refresh I can see the list of all my pages here's my insert form I'll click on insert form and you'll see that I've got a form to type stuff in so the topic we'll type in PHP the name I'll just type in my name and for attendance we're gonna go ahead and type in let's say 35 now I'm noticing I've got a little double quote here so I may have made a mistake here under my attendance yeah there it is I can see that I put the double quote there I'll remove that after we submit some of these I'm gonna go ahead and hit submit and you'll see that it disappeared basically what ended up happening was it took the data and submitted it and then it created myself a new form so let me go back up to the topic and we'll do another one let's just do my SQL and the name I'll just call it um, Matthew a little bit different and then for the attendance, let's just go ahead and say it was 34 for this one. Submit query, and you can see that it disappeared. So now let me just go ahead and make my change. I'll save that, refresh my page, and there we go. So now you'll see that double quote went away. So I've already submitted two records to my database. So let's go check the database to see if we can find those records. I'll click on the tab for my database and I'm going to go ahead and expand that so we can see it a little bit better and if you're just logging into it you're probably going to be located at the local host and so I'll just go ahead and come back here to the local host click on the snippets database the lectures table and you'll see that I've got some records in here and so I basically have got some my, the MySQL it looks like it entered it twice and that is because I refreshed the page so it resent the information I can delete a record if I want to by clicking on the delete I'll hit OK and you can see that it deleted it there so we're actually now taking stuff that's in the form and sending it to the database and it's being stored here in my MySQL database so now what we'll need to do is we're going to do a little bit more we're going to make a couple more lessons here on how to update some of the information as well as how to pull the information out of the database and put it back on the PHP page so we were successful in this video on inputting data into our database from a PHP form